Hi, my name is Pamela, and this is episode six of the Fiber Sprite podcast. This podcast is all about knitting, spinning, weaving, and dyeing. Basically, fun things you can do with yarn. So let's get started. I will say that this episode is probably going to be a little bit shorter than normal. I just haven't had a lot of time to do a lot of knitting, spinning, and weaving. I have been doing a lot of dyeing, and I'll show you some of the new colorways or restocked colorways that I have. But I've also been doing some teaching and a couple of guild talks, and those always take a little bit more time, and they're really fun to do, but I just don't get as much time to knit and spin when I'm prepping for those. So I'll start with knitting and in the last episode I showed you this piece which was on the dress form and it is the it's upside down. It is the left front of the sweater that I'm doing with that 2BU yarn and it does look really narrow um, but I'm going to have quite a wide band so that's going to take up quite a lot of space. And then I have completed the other side, which is all rolled up because it hasn't been blocked yet. So now I need to do the back and also the sleeves. And I'm still plugging away on the band. So this is the band. And if you follow me on Instagram or if you get my email newsletter, you would have read that I did this while hiking last week. So. I was kind of frustrated that I hadn't had enough time to knit lately and I hadn't had enough time to be outside with the dog lately and I ended up combining the two. So I knit while I was hiking. I used this little pin. It's just a little um, pear-shaped pin to hold the knitting so that it wouldn't get in my way. And then I had the ball of yarn in a pocket in my book bag so it was just right behind my hip and I could pull out more yarn as I needed to. So that was really fun and I what I'm gonna do is I need to finish the back and get a measurement of what the circumference is all the way around the outer hem of the sweater because the, the band is going to go all the way around in a circle and I want the cables to go in the same direction along the front panels. So they're going to change direction at the center back. So I need to figure out where that's going to be. So that's going to be the next step with this and that's getting pretty close. So the sweater that I'm wearing today is one of my early forays into designing my own knitting patterns. It is based on the Brooks cardigan by Elizabeth Zimmerman with some additional shaping for a v-neck and a steak down the center and then I knitted on this very deep shawl collar. So in the previous episode of the podcast I talked about designing and my design process and this was this sweater was the first time that I really succeeded. I, I had tried before and not done very well with designing my own sweaters, but I was working from the start of a pattern and then taking it and making lots of modifications to it. Um, one resource that you might find interesting is Knitted Bliss. She does a post every Monday called modification Mondays and it talks about the ways that knitters changed the patterns and sometimes they're very small changes and sometimes they're really incredible changes but it's a good place to start if you're thinking about modifying sweater patterns and it's also modifying sweater patterns is a good place to start designing your own sweater patterns so that's essentially what I did with this sweater. So I haven't done any spinning in the last couple of weeks but I have been doing a lot of dyeing, so I have restocked this colorway, which is called Golden Hour, and that's available in the shop. And I have also restocked Glacier Sunrise, which was the colorway that I showed you spun up in the last podcast. And I'm also, I just dyed some more 
monsoon sunset. And that is still cooling off, so I can't show it to you. But this is the cowl. So I spun the yarn for this and then knit it up into this cowl, which is based on a pattern that I will link in the show notes. And um, so this was really fun to do. This, this was one of my first colorways. It's been really fun. So that will be restocked by the time that this podcast appears. And my guild has our spinning group meetup tomorrow, so I'll have to find something to spin so I won't be totally empty-handed next time, I hope. <laughs> Anyways, um, so on to weaving. I have been doing a fair amount of weaving, and we have recently remodeled our basement so that it is an Airbnb, and I kind of want to decorate the whole thing with handmade stuff. That's, that's like my goal. So one of the things is, of course, tea towels and hand towels. And so I had in, intended to weave a couple of those and then weave sort of a runner for the table that's down there. And I got a little carried away and only wove towels. So I was going for a Thanksgiving theme. So my warp is sort of this brownish orange with a some bright oranges and some reds thrown in there. And it is probably easiest to see on this one. So this is, you can see those oranges shining through. The weft on this one is the navy blue. So those are complementary colors. It sort of dulls down the oranges a little bit, but I thought it had a really interesting effect. I also wove one with an orange weft and a red weft, and those really cl were close to the warp yarn. And so those look really solid, but those are hanging downstairs and we've got a guest down there. So I didn't want to invade her space just for the podcast. So this is the blue one. And then I also, part of the reason that I got carried away was that I was teaching a class on color theory and I wanted to show what happens when you have just a small change to the colors that you choose. So I just wove a bunch of different towels that were all different colors. So the next one is this one, which is a turquoise. So it's a very blue turquoise. And you can compare that to the navy blue. So you can kind of see that they're related. You can see that, you know, they've got similar stripes running through them, but they just have a very different effect from each other. So there's that. And then I did a series with yellows and whites. So we've got, this is a very bright white. And of course the point with this one is that white tends to wash out colors, which it definitely did here. And then this one is a creamy linen. It's, it's a very pale yellow, very creamy. And so it still washes it out, but not quite as intensely as the white white. And then the third one was with a really lemony yellow, which to me kind of has this 70s vibe to it. So But the point was to show the extreme difference when you go from white to adding, instead of white, something that's still pale, but has some color to it, how that changes the effect of color. And then I had just a little bit of warp at the end. So I wove this little, I don't know, napkin, something or another. And this is lime green. And this is actually one of my favorite ones. And one of the reasons this works so well is because the value of the lime green is so very close to the value of the orange and the warp, and that creates an effect that weavers call iridescence. It's not as strong because these yarns are not shiny, but you can kind of see how it changes a little bit depending on the angle that you're viewing it from. Sometimes it looks more orange and sometimes it looks more green. So that was really fun. And the next 
weaving that I'm going to do. I'm getting ready to set that up now. So that is going to be with this. So this is the warp chain. So when you weave on a floor loom, you measure out your warp first on a warping board or a warping mill, which is what I did here. And then you basically, to take it from your warping mill or your warping board to your loom, you need to keep it all organized and not tangled. And so a lot of people, most people will do what's called a warp chain, which is basically a giant chain of single crochet of your yarn. And that's what I've done here. So this is nine yards. And this yarn is showing up pretty blue, but it's actually a quite grassy green. And there are six different colors in here. So there's a very bright Kelly green. There are a couple of sort of blue greens. And then there's a chartreuse. And then there's this sort of, it's showing up quite blue, but it's almost a gray green color. And these are all different weights and colors of yarn. And this is a great way to do some stash busting. So I did not have enough to do what I wanted to do with any single one of these colors. But because I combined all six of them, I was able to get enough to do nine yards worth of tea towels and and or a runner. So I'm probably going to finally do my runner. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to warp it up on the Saori loom and I'm going to weave a couple of towels. I'm going to weave a runner and I, I also am going to commit to weaving just a little bit every day that I can in the month of December. So this is sort of my Christmas warp but not looking too Christmassy. And one thing that I did want to share is in the last blog post that I posted, I talked about using the spinners multi-tool for weaving. And so when you're weaving, you need to decide how close together your warp yarn is going to be set. And that's set spelled with two T's because weavers like to be fancy like that. Anyways, it's probably just an old English variation that just never changed because weavers just kept using it. So anyways, what weavers used to do and what weavers still do is they take their wraps per inch by wrapping a yarn around a ruler. And that's really time consuming. And that's the thing that I, I developed the spinners multi-tool to avoid doing. So to use it for weaving, I'm going to take my same wraps per inch. And this one comes out at about 32. So I don't have to do all that wrapping around the ruler. I do still have to do a little bit of math. So for a balanced plain weave, I usually want to take half of my measurement. So this one came out at 32. So half of that would be 16. I had one that came in between 32 and 40. So I guessed that it would be 36. Half of that would be 18. And then I had a couple that came out at 40. So half of that would be 20. And then I just averaged them all together to come up with a set of 18 ends per inch. So that's how I'll be warping my loom. And I hope to get playing with that here pretty soon. So that's all for today's podcast. Thanks so much for tuning. If you're in the United States, I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving next week. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.